we're going to be having a wonderful time and sharing some experiences with the one and only Archbishop Margaret Benton Idahosa for her 77th birthday. Hello, we are here today with the one and only Archbishop Margaret Benton Idahosa, my mother, who is a woman of beauty, a woman of excellence, a woman of love, a woman and an example to women worldwide. She is the president of the Christian Women Fellowship International. She is the Archbishop of Church of God Mission International. She's the Chancellor of Benton Idahosa University. She's the Executive Director of the Faith Mediplex Hospital. She is the maker and creator of the Balm of Gilead City. She is the proprietress of Word of Faith Group of Schools. She is a woman of God. I'm here to welcome her and to welcome you as we go on this journey together to know a little bit more about her and how the Lord has brought her through these 77 years as we commemorate her 77th glorious birthday, the number of perfection, double perfection as the Lord has granted us this time with her today. We know that you will be blessed. All right, so here we are, Mom. Mom, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. My pleasure, always. From your busy schedule to give us a few insights into your wonderful, exciting adventure of a lifetime, this journey. Congratulations on your 77th birthday. Thank you. And 77 looks beautiful on you. So we're you. all your daughters are hoping that at 77, and their husbands, I'm sure, are hoping that at 77, you, their you, wives. You're better than me. <laughs> amen. You always say that. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk a little bit about you and your life and how the journey that you've been on for these 77 years. If you could take us back to the beginning, your childhood. Um, what was that like? How was, how was that time for you? What, do you have some fond memories of your childhood that you look uh, back on and you think, wow, that was God's mercy, or that was God's favor? Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, 77 now, I, I don't think, maybe a few that I can remember. But first of all, I was born into a royal family of Bairi Sonyi of Bini Kingdom and I'm proud about that. And number two, I'm now born into the Lord Jesus Christ who finished all the work for me at the cross of Calvary. So it's double royalty. But I'm glad that I'm a child of God, I'm a child of covenant. 77 years ago, I was born by the grace of God, not to a rich family, but not to uh, the, uh, the poorest of the poor. I won't say we are the affluent, but we were not all that poor. We went to school. I grew up with two sisters. We were three. Uh, going to school, started in St. St. Matthew's and ended up in St. Peter's. And uh, we grew up just like that. And at a certain time, I went to meet my mother. And there uh, I grew up to be a young, beautiful lady. You remember going to school with your sisters? You guys, yes, you remember I've going to that. school with them? How, uh, what was going to school? Did you have shoes on? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you had school books, you had bags. So who, who was in charge of your taking care of you when you were little? Was that from your, your father's end or was that your mother? Who made sure you had books and you had all the things that you needed? In our day. <laughs> all right. Well, I grew up with my two sisters mm -hmm. because we were, we were the... the, the, the the first three that came, and oh, then it's as the if the first it, set. Yes, the first set. It was as if uh, that was the end of the whole story. Mm -hmm. But later on, my, my father married other women, 
that gave him other children. But I still remember that we grew up as three sisters mm -hmm. going to school, no shoe, um, the no bags. Oh. What uh, I can remember in those years was, uh, you know, the pane bitter. Mm -hmm. They would they would make um, a square, mm -hmm. square box. meters. <laughs> box. Yes, and create a box on it. So we three of us we had it, mm -hmm. and when we are going to school, we put it on our head. And no shoes on the leg, but. Who cares? Nobody cares because we, I mean, people, we all grew like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to school and primary six, we did primary six. So everybody now went different ways. Mm -hmm. My, one of my sisters uh, went to uh, the West. The other one went to Lagos and I was here with my mother. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we all, we all grew like that. I went to teacher training college. My sisters went to secondary school, uh, Adesua Grammar School, before we all dispatched to our different uh, places. I grew up, went to Lagos. I, w I wanted to join the police force. And I was very, very <laughs> excited about this it. This is the first I time. I, I went to, <laughs> we went for interview in Lagos. Went First of all, we went for the examination and I passed very well. So we went for the interview. And at the interview, I heard about 11 men. Uh, that they were ASP or uh, I can't remember, but they were high office officials. So we went to the interview and one of them told me, Well, you are tall enough, you are well educated, you speak good English. But one thing you have to do that way, make it to go into the force, you have to see us at, uh, in our individual offices or places. I say, oh, that's fine, no problem. I will definitely do that. And one of them is dead now. I say, I hope you understood what we meant by that. I say, oh, is there any other thing that is underlining it? Say, come on, are you a baby? You're not, you are a grown up woman. I say, oh, sir, I don't understand. I want you to, to let me know. Say, okay, that you have to come and see us at home or in the hotel. I say, oh, thank you very much, sir. You can go with your force, and I am going back to Benin, mm. where I came from. So I got up from there, went home, told my uncle, my uncle was mad. I said, no, there's no need to be mad at all. I'm going back to Bini. I'm a Bini girl. I'm going back. I really took my things and I went back. When I go home, I told my father, this, this was what uh, they told me at the interview. And he said, oh, you've done well for coming back home. You've hmm. done very, very well. So what do I do now? There was, uh, then we have just started the Anglican Women Teacher Training College. He said, you can go there. You, you, you can go there. I said, okay, I will. So I, I went there, took the form. It was then, uh, it's now in Maguero College. I went there, I took the form, came home, filled it quickly, and I went. I was so excited about education. Hmm. So excited. So I took the form, filled it, and went back, and then did the examination, passed very well, did the interview. My father, my father was an Anglican that was known in the Anglican community. And so when I told them that I'm um, Isabi Gay's uh, first child, I said, okay, no problem. He pays his tithe, he, no, he pays his due. And so let's uh, 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 put, him, put her in. So they gave me acceptance letter. I was so happy and I was happy and I went to tell my father, I have been admitted. So I went into teacher training. Four years later, I became a high elementary school teacher. I was so happy and I was teaching. They took me to 
the Guadalo, from Guadalo to different places, and I ended up in ICC, Immaculate Conception College. That was where I ended. And I ended there because I met my husband. Oh, yes. who was that? <laughs> I, I met a young man mm -hmm. who was coming to the school to preach the gospel. Mm. And each time he comes, he gathers all of us together, the teachers, the students, we all sit down to listen. At times he comes with uh, some white people, they teach, they teach the word of God and they taught us how to pray. I told him, I said, listen, what you are doing now is different from what we know. When we wake up in the morning, we don't even pray. We just greet daddy and mommy and that was it. But he said, no, he taught us how to pray. He taught us what to pray. He taught us how to read the word of God and all that. So each time he's coming, he's coming uh, to the school, we are all excited. Okay. Um, we all sit down, make the room clean and neat, so we see them. So, um, before, no, I met him before the school. I was in Anglican Teacher Training College when I met him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was bringing me food, not only me, I had some friends with me. Oh, so, see. every Saturday that uh, we are not uh, Going out, he will bring us food, jello fries, dodo, and all that. We will sit down and uh, we will eat it together. No, he will not, not, not with him. We will give him thanks and then we go, we go in. And, and that was, I mean, those are the things I can remember. I can remember, I can remember being in school and he going to the fence. Uh, blowing his horn in a certain way for me to know that he is there. And when I would just pass the bush part, go there and uh, take the food. I say, oh, thank you, brother. You know, listen, I did not envisage mm -hmm. that he was going to be my husband. Mm -hmm. But I was calling him the brother I never had. Mm -hmm. And he was all there for me. And... Uh, when it was a uh, few months to our graduation, he called me and said, Margaret, mm -hmm. I want you to be my wife. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I put my hand on my head and I was crying. <laughs> and I said, no, I have, to, I have one, two, three, four, five, five friends. They are beautiful. Oh, you, you, can you gave be, him other options. Yes. Yeah, and offering. I said, you can Offered choose up. from where and I will help to fire them up and fire her up and be married to him. And uh, he said, no, it's you. Mm. I said, what would I tell the people that my brother is now my husband? Mm -hmm. I said, I can't face it. He said, my dear, whether you talk now, people will talk. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, people will always talk. They talk of the dead, they talk of the living. Mm -hmm. They talk of the uh, rich, they talk of the poor. Mm -hmm. People will definitely talk. And after a while, they, they stop talking. And I said, no, I can't, I can't. He begged me passionately. So when I go home, I told my mother. My mother said, well, whatever you want. He is not my child, my biological child. And he is not your father's biological child. And so, even though we, we are distantly related, mm -hmm. and he said, that one is, is nothing. You can get married to him. And that was how we got married. Wow. Wow, that's such a beautiful story. I do believe that he, he knew that he was going to marry you from when he met you. I yes, I, I, yes, I'm sure he yeah. knew. Yeah. Because... Everyone he, I bring to him, mm -hmm. I say, oh, this man is interested in me. He said, no. what is his future? Mm -hmm. What work does he do? Mm -hmm. Does he have a vision? <laughs> I will say, no, he said, okay, that's not for you. 
And as, as a good sister, I would say, okay, okay. Since you are a pastor, you will pray for me mm -hmm. so that good one will come. So I brought about three people down like that and he said, no, None no. of them were good enough for his But I didn't sister. know that he was scaring them away with all those questions so that he can have me. But I'm glad today that I'm married to him. I have no regret in my life. He was a brother I didn't have, and he became that good brother to me as a husband. So I think your, your advice to the young ladies um, would also be find someone who is generous and who treats you, brings you close and takes care of you as well, not just them. I think Pablo, who they're thinking about the money aspect and they have to have a certain amount of no, money. Did he have enough, to, did he have right, money like right, that? Right. But the little he had, he, he shared it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one thing I love. He loves, mm -hmm. he loved sharing. Mm -hmm. He loved sharing. Doesn't yes. mind if he doesn't have anything, but he will share and make everybody happy. Okay. That, that, that's, uh, that's one thing that drew me to him mm -hmm. as a wife. Okay, so then you get married to him and he is a pastor. And this is this is the time when okay, being a pastor yes. wasn't. Yes, no, no, mm. he wasn't a pastor actually. Okay, he was a Sunday school teacher. Oh. You know, I lived uh, in Lawani Street mm -hmm. in uh, in Yaro area, mm -hmm. and he lived in Ozibi, about two or three three uh, streets from us. Every time he comes with Bibles, with tracts and um, preaching here and there and all that. There was a time one of my niece, no, one of my cousins died in the morning. He had convulsion throughout the night and all that, but in the morning she died. So we laid the child on the bed. So the father went to the secretariat to obtain death certificate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And before he came, he, he, he came in, he drove his bicycle, not, not the motorcycle, he drove his bicycle and uh, came in and said, uh, Margaret, what is happening? I said, listen, every day is not Christmas. <laughs> Today, a death is oh. at the door. Mm -hmm. We have just laid his, one of my cousins. He was about three or three and a half years old then. He said, ah, I have been riding bicycle, finding out who died mm -hmm. that I can raise. I said, ah, <laughs> who is that this is, person? That, that, that is not uh, possible. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he said, it's possible. With God, all things are possible. I said, okay. He, mommy, he insisted. So I took him to the, to the room. I said, the child is lying down there. So he went in with a small Bible, the small New Testament Bible. He went in there and I stood at the door just to see how he's going to perform the miracle. Mm -hmm. I stood at the door and I was just watching with one of my eyes. And he called, he, he prayed, he said a lot of things, he was speaking in tongues and all that. And he, he came back to say, Margaret, what is the name of the child? I said, what has the name of the child got to do? You do the miracle and let's see. <laughs> anyway, I told him the child's name was Inuarata. So he went back again and said, Inuarata, Inuarata, come back to life. Hmm. And he was praying. And after a while, the child sneezed. Hmm. And he took him out of the bed. And when I saw that dead child, at about four o'clock in the evening, I took to my heels. Oh, yes. And I ran, because I've never seen it before, mm -hmm. you know? Never seen it before. I ran out and I said, hey, 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 something has happened, something has happened. My mother said, what, what has happened? I said, go and meet Brother Benson, go and meet Brother Benson, he's there. And my mother and Brother Benson and the child walked out of the room. That was what got me into Christianity. Wow. 
and when it was time for me to get married, my father said, no, you cannot get married to Hallelujah Ma. I am an Anglican, a dying one for that matter.